Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you the process of converting this into this. For a bit of history on this project, my dad and I first got this buggy back in 2010, and it was an old ranch buggy that we picked up and pretty much started driving as is. It was pretty old, uh, not in the greatest condition, but it got the job done. We took it off-road all the time, hit the trails, did some fairly technical stuff while we were at it, uh, and it really did perform quite well. Now, more recently, we hadn't really been driving it as much. Uh, it was really just sitting in the carport for the last few years. Uh, and at that point, uh, near the end of my college career and uh, midway through grad school, I decided I wanted to fix it up and make it a really nice uh, vintage sports car kind of ride. So I set about doing that. Now the eagle eyed amongst you may notice that the body style of the original buggy here in the photos is quite a bit different from that of the finished product. That's because we actually swapped a new fiberglass body onto the existing chassis. This new one's actually a pretty cool story in itself. We picked this one up in a fairly severe state of disrepair with some major cracks and other damage to the fiberglass, and my dad actually went through and completely restored it. He replaced all the broken sections of fiberglass with fresh material, did the layup work for the fiberglass compositing, and restored it to an excellent condition that we could then use for subsequent parts of the build. In addition to working on the body, I also did a lot of work on the chassis to prepare it for the final build. I added a reinforcement bar, as I showed in a previous video, to ensure that the body would sit level on the chassis when everything was finalized and finished. In case you were wondering, this is what a complete rolling chassis of a VW Beetle with no body or accessories attached looks like. As you can see, it is actually drivable, although the lack of support on the steering column did prove to be a bit of a challenge while manipulating the position of the vehicle. At this point, the project started to get really fun. This is when I started designing the roll cage and side impact protection system for the buggy. When designing this roll cage, I wanted to preserve the original look and style of the dune buggy as much as possible. But at the same time, I also wanted to provide an enhanced degree of protection against rollover and side impact collision events. I did this by designing a roll cage with two separate hoops, one full-size roll hoop in the back and one shortened roll hoop in the front, which would line up with the upper edge of the dashboard. I designed both of these roll hoops to weld directly to the base plates, which I designed in an earlier video, and I additionally tied them together by two cross members, which would form the initial component of the side impact protection system. I also added an additional cross member to the side impact region of the cage, which also serves to triangulate and strengthen the two roll hoops and provide an additional member to support side impact protection. After fabricating each component of the roll cage, I secured everything in place using magnetic brackets. I verified that everything fit correctly, and as needed, I took off additional material using an angle grinder. A tubing notcher from Harbor Freight served as an excellent tool for fabricating good transitions between the ends of the tubes and the vertical risers on other parts of the tubes, such as the roll hoops. I constructed most of this roll cage from 1.5 inch DOM or DOM tubing, and some of the smaller cross members I constructed from one and a quarter inch DOM tubing. I reused the roll bar from the original buggy, which is made out of a larger material closer to one and three quarters inches in diameter. Once all the roll cage components had been placed in their correct locations, I tack welded them all together. At this point I confirmed that none of the roll cage elements were interfering with or coming into contact with the body or other parts of the car. Once this was confirmed, I was then able to remove the roll cage and the body from the chassis, and then place the roll cage back on the chassis for final welding. I used a Vulcan Omnipro 220 multiprocess welder to MIG weld all of these cage components together. Here's a quick montage of the cage welding process.
After completion of the welds, I was convinced that the weld quality was satisfactory, so I then proceeded to move on to the next part of the project. I installed my custom throttle body injection fuel injector manifold onto the intake manifold of the engine as I covered in a previous video where I built that manifold. Now since showing that video, I've done considerable work on this custom ECU system. I have a fully integrated PCB containing all of the components required to operate the engine control, including fuel injection timing and high energy ignition timing. I'll be covering the design of this and additional revisions of this circuit board in an upcoming video. With the chassis, roll cage, and powertrain ready to go, I was now able to focus on the fiberglass dune buggy body, which I proceeded to get ready for paint. The first step in this process was a thorough cleaning of the surface to remove any oils or other contaminants. After completion of the surface prep, I was then able to go over it, sand it smooth using multiple grits of sandpaper, and fill any cracks, voids, or holes in the surface. With the surface of the fiberglass smooth and consistent, I was now ready to apply a layer of primer to the outside of the body. I used Evercoat Feather Fill as my primer, and this additionally provided some additional filling capabilities for any voids or cracks that might have been missed during the filling and sanding process. After an additional round of sanding to bring the primer to a final finish, we were now ready to apply paint to the body. I went with Summit Sublime Green. With the construction of the temporary paint booth finished, I was now ready to paint the car. With the painting finally complete, and after a considerable amount of additional sanding and buffing, I was finally able to put the entire vehicle together. Now I just had a few final things to take care of, like wiring up the electrical system, adding on some accessories such as brake lights, tail lights, and headlights, and making sure that things like the turn signals, fuel system, and all of the other accessories that I wanted on the vehicle were in tip-top shape. With all of these things confirmed, there was only one last thing to do. Take it out for a drive. Now with everything ready to go and a couple of quick test drives around the block already having been performed, I was ready to take it out on the road and actually drive it to work. This was my very first drive taking the buggy all the way the 12 and a half mile distance from my house to where I work and it performed flawlessly. It ran the whole way, it performed exactly the way I wanted to, and it even drove all the way home from work without any problems whatsoever. Now despite having the buggy run really quite well and perform as I needed it to, there were still a few issues I needed to address. The original 1600cc engine that came with the buggy unfortunately had about 50 thousandths of end play and had really terrible rod knock. I didn't expect it would last very long under these conditions, so I decided to preemptively replace it before I had any serious mechanical failures. I picked up a new engine on Craigslist for only $450. This is a real gamble, as the engine was seized and significantly corroded. However, the seller claimed that it was almost a brand new build and had never actually been put into service. 
I figured I would at least get a good engine case out of it, even if I did have to do a complete rebuild. But nevertheless, for the price and considering that it was basically a complete engine, claimed to be a 1776cc, I decided to go for it anyway. After applying a considerable amount of PB blaster into the inside of the cylinders via the spark plug holes, I was finally able to get the engine turning and free. After verifying that the ignition system was functioning properly, and after mounting the engine to a transmission with a starter motor, I was then able to see if I could get it to fire. Take just a little bit, about that much. And what we're gonna do is try to now crank on it and we'll see if it'll start. So I've got my 12 volt from the bat box. I'm gonna have finger on the throttle to modulate. Let's crank. As you saw just then, it fired right up and ran without any sort of trouble. I went ahead and changed the oil a couple of times to flush out any moisture and other contaminants and proceeded to install the engine on the buggy. Despite its low price and seized up condition, I have been able to use this engine for the past two months now, daily driving it to work and using it for all of my automotive activities. Now, I'll be the first to say that driving a homemade car this age to work every day has certainly not been without its issues. However, it's been a remarkably reliable machine and I've really been able to get an incredible amount of use out of it considering what I started with. In fact, for the past two months, I've been driving it every day to work the entire trip and it's really been performing well enough to actually call it a reliable daily, which I think is incredible. In fact, the only reason I'm not still daily driving the buggy is because I've made a new vehicular acquisition. This one is a Tesla Model 3, which you may have caught in an earlier part of the video. You'll be seeing a lot more of the Model 3 in upcoming videos. But needless to say, I still do drive the buggy quite regularly around town and even take it to work on occasion. Thank you so much for watching this video and for watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed watching this build process from start to finish, and certainly I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed building it. Driving a car that you built yourself really is a unique experience that is absolutely incredible. It's been one of the most rewarding projects I've ever worked on, and I am so glad to have been able to share it here. Thanks for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.